Hey guys, this is April, and today we're going to talk about the common characteristics in Romanesque and Gothic architecture, as well as how to differentiate between these two types of styles. One thing I want to quickly mention before we get started is there's going to be some buildings that you look at that actually have both Romanesque and Gothic elements within it. Now the reason that that happened was these massive structures take decades to create, and those that have traits of both Romanesque and Gothic were created during a transitional phase. Builders during this time were not shy of changing styles halfway through the construction of a massive structure like a cathedral for the sake of remaining fashionable. And most of the time, you'll have even more than three architectural styles within one structure. You might have Romanesque, Gothic, and Baroque in a single cathedral. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about Romanesque architecture. So one thing that becomes very popular during this time period is pilgrimages. A pilgrimage is essentially a spiritual journey in which an individual would go around to different cathedrals to visit relics. One of the biggest reasons people went on this journey was to hopefully get less time in purgatory, basically to gain favor from God. Another reason why people visited these relics is they believed that they had miraculous powers, so healing powers essentially. Because pilgrimages became so popular, towns began to decide to build massive cathedrals as a way to promote essentially what was spiritual tourism. When it comes to Romanesque cathedrals, the most noticeable trait in these structures are the Roman arches. Sometimes these arches had a structural purpose, but a lot of times these arches are decorative motifs. Europeans during this time were very interested in ancient Roman culture, and that interest had been going on for a while now, at least since the Carolingian Renaissance. A couple of other ancient Roman innovations that we see in Romanesque architecture are barrel vaults and groin vaults. We also see the use of massive walls and piers. The reason that this is the case is barrel vaults or groin vaults need massive walls and piers to support them. If they don't have massive walls or piers, the roofs are going to fall apart. Another thing that you'll notice about Romanesque architecture is if you go to the interior, the inside of these structures are very dark, and that is because they don't have many windows. When you have to support a very heavy roof and have to have thick walls, you can't have that wall compromised by having giant windows in it. So to light these structures, they had to rely on candlelight rather than windows. Another ancient Roman inspiration that we begin to see in Romanesque architecture, and even more so in Gothic architecture, is the use of three portals, three entryways on the facade. This is a reference to the triumphal arch of Constantine. It also serves as symbolism for the idea of Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The area above these doorways, called the tympanum, was usually decorated with a last judgment scene during this time. There's a couple of reasons for this. One reason was people believed that Christ was returning very soon since it was the turn of the millennium. Another reason why this motif was popular in tympanums is when it came to medieval justice, a lot of times it took place at the front of a cathedral. A couple of other things that you'll notice when looking at Romanesque architecture, especially if you're comparing it to Gothic buildings, is that Romanesque cathedrals tend to be simpler and also more squat than Gothic cathedrals. They are as tall and they're more spread out horizontally. They also preferred symmetry when it came to the shape of their buildings. The last major trait I want to cover for Romanesque architecture, which we also see in Gothic architecture, is the overall shape of the plan of the cathedral becomes more like that of elongated cross. The architects of these buildings wanted the whole structure to relate to the spiritual message of the church. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about Gothic architecture now. One trait you can look for to figure out if a structure is gothic or not are the type of arches it has. If it has pointed arches, then it's gothic. The pointed arch is probably an Islamic influence that was brought over from the Crusades. 
pointed arches when compared to Romanesque arches are much better when it comes to dispersing stress from the roof. Pointed arches angle that stress more directly into the ground than Roman arches, which put that stress more into the walls. This allowed Gothic structures to be much taller than Romanesque structures. Another major Gothic architectural element are flying buttresses. A flying buttress essentially is a buttress that is semi-detached from the wall it's supporting, but has a flyer connected to it to receive some of that stress, to give it some support, essentially. This innovation allowed architects to add a lot more stained glass windows to the walls. This is why Gothic cathedrals are so much lighter in the interior when compared to Romanesque cathedrals. This is also the time in which rose windows become very popular in cathedrals. Another reason why we see the rise in stained glass windows in these structures is because of Abbot Sujet, who was the advisor of the King of France and the designer of what we consider the first Gothic cathedral. Sujet connected light with divinity as well as promoting faith, so he encouraged other architects to keep their cathedrals very light and bright. The last major characteristic of Gothic art that makes it different from Romanesque is the heavy use of ornamentation as well as color. Gothic architects wanted to create a sense of awe, not just through size and having giant towers that could be seen throughout the whole town, but also through intricate detail and very bright colors, which a lot of it has faded away now. So that's all I have for Romanesque and Gothic architecture. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below.